Another application of the Gordon Growth Model is to calculate the justified price-to-earnings ratio of the firm based on the firm's fundamentals. If we divide both sides of the equation by current earnings, E0, we get this equation. On the right-hand side, we have the current dividend divided by current earnings in the numerator. This is the current dividend payout ratio. As the payout ratio is 1 minus the retention ratio, another way of expressing this is as such, where B is the retention ratio. On the left-hand side, we have the value of the stock divided by the current earnings. To make it more consistent with P-E ratio, the notation for value here is often switched to P0, though you should be clear that this does not refer to current price. We call this the justified trailing P-E ratio for the stock. However, since investments are often forward-looking, analysts are more interested in the justified leading P-E ratio of a stock. Using the same approach, we divide both sides of the GGM equation by next year's projected earnings instead of the current earnings. In this case, we have the expected dividend payout ratio for the next period. Likewise, if the payout ratio is expected to remain constant, we can express it in terms of the retention ratio. Similarly, we change V0 to P0 to make the notation consistent with PE. So, in essence, the justified PE ratio of a stock is rather simple using the Gordon Growth Model. You do not even need the earnings or dividend of the company. As long as the company has a consistent payout or retention ratio, the justified P-E ratio is simply a function of the payout ratio, required return, and growth rate of the stock. Looking back at our example of XYZ stock, let's say the current $5 dividend was paid out from earnings of $6.25. Calculate the justified leading P-E and justified trailing P-E of the stock if the growth rate is estimated at 4% and the required return is 9%. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. First, let's determine the three parameters required to calculate justified P-E. The payout ratio is the dividend divided by the earnings, which is 0.8. Required return is given as 9% and growth rate at 4%. And let's plug these figures into the formula for justified leading P-E. That gives us a justified P-E of 16 times. And likewise for justified trailing P-E, that gives us 16.64 times. You may have noticed that the justified trailing P-E is simply the leading P-E times 1 plus growth rate. This means that the justified trailing P.E. should always be higher than the leading P.E. This makes sense, as we expect the next period's earnings to be higher, so the leading P.E. should be lower. Now, let's explore a hypothetical scenario. Let's say XYZ has a dividend payout ratio of 1.0. That is, it pays out all its earnings to shareholders so it does not retain any of the earnings to grow the company. The growth rate of the company can therefore be assumed to be zero. In such a case, what should the justified forward P.E. of the stock be? Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. If we plug in the figures into the formula, we should get a P.E. of 11.1. Compare this with our earlier calculation of 16 times leading P.E., and we can interpret that difference in P.E. that's 4.9 times P.E. as attributable to expected growth of the company. We can also use this argument to segment the firm's equity value into two components. Using the Gordon Growth Model, we have earlier estimated the intrinsic value of the stock at $104, but if we assume full payout and zero growth, the next dividend would be $6.25, so the value of the stock is just $69.44. This means that the stock value due to growth is $34.56.
We call this the present value of growth opportunities, or PVGO in short. The generalized formula for PVGO is therefore the intrinsic value of the stock minus E1 over R, where E1 is the forward earnings. You may be wondering why is it not D1? In effect, it doesn't matter, because this component is calculated based on zero growth, which means 100% dividend payout, so the earnings is equal to the dividend. I hope you see the relationships here. The value of a growing company can be segmented into two components. If the payout ratio is less than one, it means the company is retaining cash for growth opportunities, so there is expected growth in company value and dividend. This results in a higher intrinsic value of the stock than the case where the company is not expected to grow. The difference due to expected growth is the PVGO. The other component, which is not dependent on growth, is also known as the value of the company's assets in place, which means that the company's assets continually generate returns equal to the required return of the stock. In general, companies in slow-growth industries like utilities have low PVGO, and most of their value comes from their assets in place. In contrast, high-growth potential sectors, like the tech sector, tend to be valued more based on their PVGO. With that, let's practice. Zoom Plus is a tech company, and its shares currently trade at $120. The company has expected earnings of $3 per share, and the shares have a required return of 15%. Determine the proportion of the company's leading P-E ratio that's attributable to PVGO. Pause the video now and work out your answer. And we're back. First, let's calculate the PVGO, which is the value of the company, minus E1 over R. This gives us a PVGO of $100. Based on the stock's current price, the P-E ratio is 40 times. And the P-E attributable to PVGO is 33.3 times. As such, 83% of the firm's leading P-E ratio is attributable to PVGO. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.